what is going on? So, you know, sorry about the hum in the background. It's hot in my garage. Got the fan going. I'm in Texas. It's 88 today. Sorry. I got a mess of a target to show you. I got, I mean, there's stuff all over this thing. But you can see some uh, stuff where I circled shot groups. So I told you I wasn't going to paint my cross until um, I could get it to shoot. Well, I got it to shoot using a VG6 Gamma. Um, I'm sorry, go back. The first time I did it, I used a Fur Franz muzzle device, three port muzzle brake. Um, I did not torque it down. I did hand tight plus maybe an eighth of a turn with a wrench, and that was it. And so that was enough to relieve the pressure off the barrel, the torque of the barrel, to make sure it shot again. Uh, and I got really good results out of that. And so I wanted to fast forward, I reloaded stuff the same way. And I said, okay, how do I duplicate this? But I also wanted to test it with my VG6 without cranking it down. So I took some of the peel washers off. I did all that. Um, that one was like hand tightness and a quart. Uh, I think the Fur Friends was 16th, roughly. It was like small torque. The VG6 was a eighth of a, maybe between an eighth and a quarter of a uh, uh, torquing for lack of a better term. So anyways, so I took it out today. I shot different groups with uh, same bullets, did 10, uh, 10 shots, five shots each between the two muzzle brakes. And that's why this is a mess because I thought I was gonna have a major shift in point of aim, point of impact between the two um, muzzle, brake, muzzle devices. I did not at all. And I'm gonna show you some results for this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over the data with you first and then I'm gonna show you some pictures. Or I'll show you the picture of it. And so I'm going to get a little closer because we're friends. And so you can hear me. So anyways, with the VG6, the uh, Gamma VG6 uh, 7.62 muzzle device, these are going to be with 150 SSTs, 150 Interbond, um, 168 ELD match, and 180 Interbonds. Maybe they're interlocks. I think they're interlocks from Hornady. All these are Hornady. 150 SST, I shot a .91. 150 inner bond lock, I shot a 1.2. 168 ELDM, 0.4. I loved that group. I wanted to stop shooting immediately. That was a great group. 180 inter bond lock, 0.99. All of those just did exactly what I wanted this rifle to do. I reshot five more ELDMs and shot a 0 .865, all right? This was a hot barrel, so I'll take it. Fast forward to the Fur Friends muzzle device. I don't have them right in front of me, but it's a muzzle device. The SST, 150 SST did a 0 .385. Yeah. The 150 inter bond lock did a 1.1 with a called flyer. I still counted it, it was 1.1. Um, like, the second I, I was getting settled, my finger had pulled the, the first stage that trigger and I shot it. I was like, come on. So if I don't count that one, which I do because it's 1.1, I shot a 0.317. Not a fluke, because I did it again. 168 ELD match. I shot my first five into 0.415. Then I shot four more because I just I had more ELD match loaded up. And it only opened up with a hot barrel to 1.2. So nine total shots, quick succession. Um, I could see definitely where I put, uh, I'm looking at it now, yeah. I could see where I put them, and then as it got hot, it opened up to up and to the left just a hair, and I'll show you that. That was the ELD match. The 180 Intramon lock, 1.1 inch. Not too bad, that's a good hunting round right there. Um, if I'm only hunting like to three, 400 yards for elk or deer, four or five inch group, that's totally fine. Then I reshot the 168 um, with the fur fans. Make sure I'm looking at the right thing here. Okay. Um, that was only a three shot group. Just telling you now, I'm not cheating. That's all I had left. I shot a .395 with that. Um, but it goes to show you that torque on the barrel was not what this gun wanted at all. So I'm gonna see if I can get all this right. These were the first shots, just this right here with the black circle around it with the, uh, let me get this right here, 168 with the VG6. This cluster right here was with the fur friends, and as it got hot and opened up, like I said, it opened up out here. Still not bad, that was a, where'd it go? 1.2 with a hot barrel. 
because I just shot some other groups too, so I'm okay with that. Um, and then somebody shot my target. Oh, the guy had a Creedmoor over there. He's like, oh, dude, I think I shot your target. It looks like mine. I'm like, this did not look like his. Anyways, so when I reshot the 150 SST with the Fur Friends, a .385, those are it right there. I'm not flipping you off. Those are it right there. The VG6 with the, with the 150 SSTs is right here. And then when I reshot 168s at the end, shot this and this, and this was a hot barrel with my last group of my last uh, one, two, three, four, five, one eighties. I just rapid fired it and that's what I got. It was a hot barrel, like it was smoking. It was, I'm, I'm burning on the new paint. So um, these are the one, 180s when I slowed it down. Um, the first three are right here. Then the second three are here and here. All right, so you can see those two distinct di different groups there. This was 169 grain Winchester match that I started off again with. Um, I had five left. I just wanted to make sure I was on paper. And then I, I thought the cool thing was the first shot of the, uh, which one was this one? That was the VG6. Yeah, first shot of the VG6 on the 150 Interbond lock, whatever it is. It was right dead center in that dot, half inch dot. And so I don't know what else to do. I think I'm good. And so I am going to, now I'm, I've already made the decision, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be mysterious. I'm like, oh, what muzzle device am I gonna, I'm gonna use the, the Gem VG6 because I like the recoil impulse a lot better. Um, and I feel like it recoils back, whereas the Fur Friends recoils up, but it doesn't come back. It's kind of weird. Um, I liked the impulse better. If you use muzzle devices, you know what the impulse feels like. Silencers feel different and all that good stuff. So now I'm going to take that VG6 off. Yeah, I'm going to rock set that sucker because it's barely on. I can take it off by hand. It's that loose. It's, it's tight, but I can do it by hand. So I'm going to put two drops of rock set on there. And it's funny that you have to buy that much to get two drops. <laughs> so I'm going to lock tight everything. So, you know, for a hunting, practical shooting standpoint, this is phenomenal. Um, also, if you notice here, the 168 shot high here, but they shot right next to it here. So up here, I'm, uh, I was one mil high. So I brought down one mil, um, and I was right here on these. Or I'm sorry, on this one, and I brought it down 0.2, and it brought it down here. So my elevation is, is back on track, which is awesome because the last groups I shot before I took the scope off, the scope mount off, was the 168s. Um, I adjusted it up 1.2 mils to compensate for the... 150s. Um, it was uh, it was kind of high, and so I'm trying to remember. Yeah, we shot over here, so I was 1.2 mils high. So I brought that back down. Shot my 150s, then the 168s were high. I was like, good grief. So I brought it down one point, back down 1.2, and brought it back to reality. So it's something that I can predict. Um, I would prefer to shoot these 168s over anything. So going forward. I have four times the amount of 168s as I have everything else. Going forward, that's probably what I'm going to stick to. That's what I always find when 68 ELD matches. Um, they're super available in this area, so I think I'm just going to get those. I do want to try some 178 ELD matches. have not seen them in a while, but if I see some, I'm going to grab some. So here we are. I have a rifle that shoots. Now I can get out and do some practical shooting, some positional shooting, get out to my little three or four acres that I got out in the, in the woods and see what I can do. Um, and with that, I'm not going to bore you any longer, but experiment, 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 track data, all the way down to, like I had how many inch pounds or foot pounds I had my muzzle devices torched to, now they're at like five foot pounds. That's it. And, but now I know where I am and I know what to do and I know how to fix the problem that I created by over torquing or torquing a barrel that didn't like to be torqued and I thought it was my ammo, my ammo is next. I'm shooting groups like this. And my extreme spreads and stuff like that were all over the place. My tightest group, that uh, point three something, was like a 50 foot per second extreme spread. What are you going to do? So I know that doesn't translate at 100. It translates downrange. I get it. So um, track your data. Make sense of your data. Make it make sense. Track the data that matters. And find solutions to your problems. And if not, go online and ask somebody else to do it for you. So with that, stay tactical.